it famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that this is still a 4F beauty. And if I've done my editing job properly, I should be like Dorothy at the beginning of Wizard of Oz, black and white. Panic not. This will not go the same way. There's no dropping houses on people to nick their shoes. Pretty shoes though they were. But you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description, that this is me checking out one of the brands that I wanted to try in 2021. And I'm really happy to say that I am starting off with the Violet Ink palette from a menagerie. So, if you want to see what I make of this, whether I want to get any more of their palettes now that I've tried their formula, and whether this gave me any troubles at all, then my friend, as ever, you that was the worst week ever. You have the best seat in the house. As I've said, since time immemorial. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies. Honestly, I don't know what is going on with the um, daylight today, but uh, it appears that it's not wanting to be daylight. Um, and this is going to sound repetitive to those of you who watch me a lot, but I film using daylight and LED strip bulbs because I want you to see the colours in as close to natural daylight as possible. But... Hopefully these uh, strip lights will do their thing and keep things looking Jeff's kiss I will have shown you this in the intro. I am so happy that I got this. This obviously is uh, one of the brands that I wanted to try Oh Sorry fluff up my nose Just got the new got a new towel out this morning and you know what you're like for being fluffy when you first wash them. Mm. Um, yeah, this is one of the brands that I wanted to try. This is Menagerie. And it's the Violet Ink palette. Which is Diddy. But it's one of my favourite colours. Purples and greens are my jam when it comes to eyeshadows. Uh, so this is, this is calling me. Um, I actually managed to pick this up from Depop, so I was selling it. So I was super happy about that because it meant no expensive shipping from America. Because apparently they have now reopened shipping back up to the UK, which is cool. And they also found a box or two of the Violet inks, so they're going to be selling those off as well. Um, so this is perfect timing for me to actually do a look with said palette. Um, and of course I didn't get any import fees because it came from the UK. So I'm super happy that somebody decided this wasn't for them. Now, this obviously remains a teaching channel. By virtue of that, um, when I film, I'm zoomed right in tight to just my eyes. There's a number of reasons for this. Um, the main one is so that if you're watching me on a phone screen and your eyesight's not what it could be, there's nothing else on screen to distract you. It's literally as close up on my eyes as I can get it so you can really see what's going on. It does mean when I'm looking down to clean a brush, add more pigment, you get a lovely shot of my little widow's peak here, but I think that's a small price to pay for actually being able to see what's going on. Um, it also makes it a little bit easier for me when I'm trying to cut out 
when I'm grimacing or groaning with pain. Um, the cuts are less obvious when it's just my eyes on screen, let's put it that way. Um, I don't cut any of the blending out, however, unless I'm doing a cut crease, in which case I'll do one in real time and I'll speed the other one up. Um, I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment, which will be just up close and personal, just my eyes on screen. I've got deep set eyes and I see a lot of people, even the big beauty gurus, who've got deep set eyes say they have hooded lids. Sorry, it's very windy here today as well as being very overcast and hubby being a modern day hippie we've got a bead curtain at the back door on the outside. So if you hear some clonking, it, it's not me, it's not the fridge for once, it's the bead curtain banging against the back door in the wind, which is lovely. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm going to insert a clip where I talk you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids because makeup wears on them in a very similar way because they have the same issue of parts of your eyelid rubbing against another part of your eyelid. But the workaround and how to apply your makeup initially is actually quite different. So if you've been following the hooded tutorial and wondering why you're not getting as good a look as you want, it could be because you've got deep set eyes. So this clip will talk you through how to work out which eye type you have and what the workaround is for each eye type. Once that's done, I'll be back to start playing with that palette. Yay! Right, uh, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid 
or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover the visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to use my uh, Luxie, can barely see in this light, 205 tapered blending brush. It is clean, it's just stained but it's a big old round fluffy brush. To start with. Um, as always hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on your lid as possible. If the handle is long enough brace it against the palm of your hand just to stabilise this end a little bit more. And we're going to be doing the Viennese waltz of a blend which is natural turns towards the nose, a bit of a flecker when we get there and reverse turn to come back out. The reason I do that rather than just the windscreen wiper is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. But I know teenagers who've always been slim that have similar issues. And if you're just relying on your windshield wiper, you're going to have the issue of your lid folding over eyeshadow skipping bits and then you get those telltale barcodes or tiger stripes. By doing the Viennese waltz because we're blending in one direction and then the other we are very gently manipulating the lid around without causing additional damage but making sure that all of it is covered with pigment. Right I'm going to start off by going into a jelly finish. Cannot tell you how excited I am to try this palette. I've heard such good things about Menagerie. Well, reasonable amount of kick up. But that's fine because I just pick that up when I want to add more pigment or whatever. I always start at the outside edge because if it does deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to sort it out without your nose in the way. And I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow. So I'm going to start about here. And just start applying the pigment. Yeah, I've got a lot fewer um, brands on my list this year of brands that I want to try. Um, for a number of reasons, really. I, I want to try and focus this year as much as I can on using palettes that I've got rather than keep buying new palettes. Partly because I can't afford to keep buying new palettes. You know, I'm not on PR. I don't get stuff sent to me. Um, so unless someone buys it for me for Christmas or birthday or, you know, like my two lovelies, Shari and Kay, that every so often become my 
make up fairy godmother and send me a little something something. Um, everything you see I've bought for myself, you know. Which, when you're on a very fixed low income, because of being disabled, that ain't that easy. However, I am very good at spotting a bargain and spotting fakes on things like Depop, so fortunately I've uh, managed to pick up quite a lot of my palettes, either during a sale like the Mitchell ones or, uh, you know, I've managed to pick them up from Depop, like this one for example, I picked up from Depop, so, yay. She did have, um, another one on there. She had the feral palette but unfortunately she'd sold that by the time I realised that she'd uploaded them. Um, and she had another one which I think was something per one with a line on the front. But that was A, a lot more expensive and B a little bit neutral for me. You know, when I did that film of the neutral palettes that I've got, I was shocked at just how many neutral palettes I've actually got. So I don't really want to add any more. One thing I did see though, I spotted on... Um, Oh, do you see what I mean about how my eyes just decide to weep for no reason? I get this so often. It's ridiculous. Um, one of the things I did spot that someone had done very helpfully on Instagram, and I can't remember who did it now. Might have been deep this. Um, they compared Gemini 27 to the September Rose Brew palette. And I'd been contemplating 27, because obviously I've, I've got Gemini now. And I'm like, mm, do I want 27? And I thought, I don't know, it looks really familiar. And I couldn't work out whether it was just because it was a, a neutral palette that I thought I'd seen it before. But as soon as they compared it to the, the September Rose Brew, which obviously I've got, I've got a... Um, oh, actually that I did get in PR from... September Rose, she did send me that one, bless her. Um, I like this. I'm just going to clean the brush on a clean washcloth. Yeah, and I've got a code for September Rose. So if you too have been contemplating getting Gemini 27, but... or you'd prefer to support a UK indie brand, then September Rose's Brew palette is an awesome option and my code BOMBER in all caps will save you I think 10% I do get a small kickback from that not a massive amount but I do get a small kickback but uh, it's entirely up to you, you don't have to use the code it's only recently actually that she um, she insisted that she had to start paying me because I, I was sending so many sales her way and she's like, but I'm not giving you anything in return. And I'm like, oh, send me a palette then. <laughs> but she insisted she had to start paying me. So, which is sweet of her. Right, that blended out really quite nicely for her. It's quite a deep pastel actually, I quite like that. It looks like it's grabbed a little bit here. But I have been having issues with my Stress X Morgan, so that could be that affecting it because this side hasn't done it. So. Right, using the same brush, I'm going to go into Octopi. Okay, this has got considerably more kick up than the lighter one had. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to do this just a fraction lower down, kind of running along the top of my natural crease. 
just to add a little bit of depth and start to build the look up a bit. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow's is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, then I hope it's as fabulous as you are, darling. Okay, that blended together really nicely. And you can see the air was starting to build the depth of colour up now. The reason that I do both eyes kind of not at the same time obviously because I'm doing one and then the other. Um, with my fibro I can very often get quite puffy, swollen um, areas including on my face. I mean normally, oh, when my eyes water and the brush has got wet. Great. Um, yeah, where I, what was I saying? Fibro. Normally my, I notice it in my legs and feet and my hands. But I do get the occasional times when my eyelids will swell, like conjunctivitis but without the pain and the redness and the discharge. Um, I've always had super super watery eyes all my life so that's not anything to do with it. Um, And there's times when, when I relax my brows like this and look at it, there'll be different shapes, even though they're on the same shape both sides. So it gives you the opportunity if when you apply a, a colour you think it looks different each side, it gives you time to play with it and make them look the same even if they're different shapes both sides. Um, and if you've already applied all of your pigments, it can be quite difficult sometimes to work out where you need to make the adjustment. I also think it's quicker this way. Because you're only having to clean your brushes once as you go through. I am really, I can see why people rave about the quality of these shadows. They really are nice. They're blending together very nicely because purples are, purples, blues and greens are some of the most difficult colours to create. Um, so the fact that these purples are blending so very nicely together is a really, a really good sign. Definitely stains the brushes though. That's what I hate about white bristled brushes. Why do they do it? Right, now I'm going to change brush. And I'm going to... Do I want this one or do I want that one? I think I want that one. I want that one. Right, I'm going to go for a slightly more tapered brush. Still round, but... A more a smaller point to it because however wide the end of the brush is that's how wide it will blend the color out to. Right, I'm going to dip into inkjet and then I'm going to initially concentrate on the outside edge but then blend across my crease so if you've moved your crease this is the point that you now put it Put this colour where you've moved your crease to. I'm going to start off initially right on the edge here and just build that colour up. I'll bring it down onto the outer edge of the mobile. I cannot see a damn thing now because obviously I'm 
blind in my left eye, so I'm very much relying on muscle memory and just hoping I'm still uh, in camera and in focus. Yay, look at that. Right, this is the point that I start to create my sort of flick. Because I can't always put liner on. As you can see, this eye is very watery today, so I'm not going to be able to. But I create the look with my wing line, with my... Um, <clears throat> Ah, uh, pigment, eyeshadow. That's not a problem with fibro. You suddenly forget what word you're going to be using right in the middle of using it. I'm just going to run some of this through the rest of my crease. I'll be tidying this up with some micellar water on a pad. But just by doing that with the shadow, can you see how it's lifted the outside edge of this eye compared to this eye? <clears throat> That's the beauty of makeup. And again, Concentrate initially on. I always do my eyes before my base. I just prefer that way because then I can, you know, I can tidy up with my cellar water. And if things go wrong, I can just whip the whole thing off and start again without having affected on the foundation anyway. This is also a good trick if you're just starting to use um, liner because if you create your flick initially with your eyeshadow it's then much easier when you're going to put your liner on because you just follow the line you've done already. It's much easier to get the angles the same. Now with this eye, uh, you can see that this lid moves an awful lot more. And I've got super deep creasing just here. That's because when I was a kid, and I'm talking like five, six years old. My eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital because they were trying to work out why I couldn't see properly. And that has caused this additional damage to this eye. Which means that when I actually put the shimmer on the lid I do have to break my own rule about not stretching the lid out. But if I don't do that, the pigment just sits in the crease and then ends up in my eye and down my face during the day, which is both painful and unsightly. Right, get this brush a clean off. I am really impressed so far with these. I mean, I've used three of the mattes. I'm probably going to use both of the shimmers. There's only going to be one of these shades so far that I haven't used, and I might use that on the lower lash line. Right, so. Pad with my cellar water on. I'm just going to tidy up the edge. Now, I know what, you th what a lot of people say to me, why don't you just use tape? Well, because if the tape is sticky enough, 
to stop pigment from going underneath it, then it's going to pull at your skin when you take it off. Which will cause microscopic damage and then you'll end up with major issues in a few years time. So I much prefer just tidying up with a micellar wipe because to be honest how long did that take? Now I always wet um, shimmers when I'm applying them partly because it helps to minimise fallout and partly because I know a lot of people apply shimmers using their fingers I don't like doing that um, but never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush you'll kill the pigment so I'm going to start off with this I think it's a concealer brush but it's a flat brush once I've got the pigment on it I'll be wetting it with this which is just a setting spray you can use any moisture that you want you can use um, a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu you can use a priming spray, a setting spray, a finishing spray. You can even just save a bottle once it's empty and put fresh water in it, fresh cold water in it each time you're going to use makeup. Right, I'm going into a mimic. Applying some pigment onto the brush. Okay, come on. Now the ferrule is now wet, so I'm going to tuck that into my knuckles and spin. Oh, is this a duochrome? Oh, um, because we don't want moisture getting down and loosening that glue. Otherwise, if the bristles fall out, we have a rather expensive stick. Right, the reason I like to use a brush this small is because I can get right into this corner here. As you can see. Now the first time that I use a palette, I will normally not do a cut crease because I want to see how opaque the shadows are. Right, I'm just going to dry that brush. I'm going to go back in and see if this actually works better dry. Because it's almost like a cream to powder, almost like a, a super shock feeling shadow. So I might try applying it dry. Yeah, I think this one applies better when you don't wet it. Um, yeah, I don't like to do a cut crease where I put the concealer down because I like to see how much opacity each shimmer has, whether it's a topper shade or whether it's got a base pigment, you know. Right, now as I said, I do have to break my own rule with the other eye, but I will show you how I do it without causing too much additional damage, and obviously I'm going to be doing some, but to cause as little additional damage as possible, I only stretch the lid out far enough to straighten the creases, and then I apply the pigment and blend it out across the creased area and just beyond it and then gently let go and put it back so I don't put it out behind my ear roll and I don't just let it slam back and then just continue as I did with this eye 
But as you can see, this lid does move considerably more. Hmm. I'm liking this. And then I'm going to go into the other, the deeper shimmer, which is three hearts. There's a pool, of course, octopuses do have three hearts. Or octopi, I should say, really, shouldn't I? It's because of the octopus's garden in the sea. I always want to say that. Right. And I'm going to pop this on the second half of my lid. I'm getting some fallout from this, but these do seem to apply better when they're dry. And I'm just going to lightly drag a lighter shade across to blend the two together, like so. Same this side. This is such a vibrant purple, this one. And then again, lightly blend where the two colours meet. I might pop a wee bit more of the lighter one on this side. so pretty. Right my lovely ones, I am going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and other base products on. And I'll be back to finish off this eye look. Now I'm going to have a bit of a wait before I speak to you again but for you my darlings it will be absolutely instant. So I guess I'll see you right now. Hey my lovely ones, I am indeed back. Right. Okie dokie. I was on my soap brows and I went in with Octopi, which is this mid-toned shade. I didn't want to go in with the really deep one. Uh, I quite like that. Against the, the sort of pastel y, lilac y purple, because this is a very indigo purple, very deep blue purple. This is more of a lilac y purple. This particular one, which, although in here, is just a uh, a true purple it looks almost teal against the lilac and I really like that. Hmm. Right, I'm going to go into inkjet with my flat topped brush which is the deep indigo blue purple and I'm going to run that along the lower lash line. I know this is my friend Will's favourite bit. So I'll try not to F it up, to quote RuPaul. Hmm. 
nice. Chunky brush. And I'm going to go into Iron Grip, which is the last shade that I'd not used. So this means that by using this shade, I will have used every single shade in the palette. And I love doing that the first time I use a six pan. I'm just going to use this to really gently buff out the lower lash line. I'm just add a little bit of sort of smokiness down there. Because obviously where my eyes are watery I don't risk putting anything in my actual waterline. But by doing this you can still emphasize your lower lashes and give them some oomph mm. I can see this fast becoming one of my favorite palettes at this rate Right, this is a very cheap brush that I got off of eBay years ago, a lip brush. And I'm going to go into my Kaleidos Moon Cruiser highlight. And pop a little bit of this up under the tail of my brow. Picked up Mars Melter from um, Depop. But um, it's the new one, the reformulated one, which I think might be a tad dark me to use as a highlight as you can see but what I might do is use Moon Cruiser on my usual areas that I add highlight and then maybe pop a little bit of Mars Melter just on the very edge of the cheekbone there if I don't like it it's fine I haven't got to go anywhere today but failing that I'll either use it as a, an eyeshadow or I'll use it um, as a blush a blush topper Right, my beautiful ones, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to apply a highlight to various areas of my face. Uh, mascara, lippy, do something with the hair. I gave myself a haircut last night, which is why I've got some mega short front bits again. Lush. But there's my widow's peak, as promised. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to smother myself in glittery highlight mascara and lippy and I will be back with my finished looks and my first impression thoughts on the Violet Ink Menagerie palette again for you instant I am back as you can see I am glowing enough to dazzle the gods so they can't see what I'm doing but uh, on a day like this when there's not much daylight I go ham with the highlight let's be honest I go ham with the highlight even on a bright day but you know it's more fun to do it when it's a dull day and I quite like that combination of the two highlights together Gave it a more purple shift. Well, I suppose blue and red together would, wouldn't it? Duh. 
Right, uh, the mascara is the Clarins one that my friend Hedda sent me. Lippy is one of my new Melt ones in shade Mota, which is the blue. I did have a purple one, I have got a purple one, but I decided I wanted to wear the blue one against it because it kind of ties in with the tone of my eyebrows. So, what do I think of this little baby? I really like it. I can see why people rave about the menagerie quality because this blended like a dream. And purples are not easy. Um, this. Uh, I'm trying this year to use each palette three times and then put it away and put a different palette out. I'm going to find it very difficult to put this down after using it twice more. I don't film all of them, obviously, um, but I do play with palettes an awful lot. Mm. You could have told me I had lipstick on my teeth. I mean, come on. I thought we were supposed to be friends. This is the point that you're all screaming at the screen. We were bloody telling you, you idiot, and you weren't listening. <laughs> right. I really like that. Um, what date is it that Menagerie were doing the restock? I've got it in my calendar. Hang on. Friday the 29th of January they're doing restock um, so if you haven't got one of these and you want one that's definitely the time to get on and grab one because I really like this um, I really like that a lot uh, safe to say it is going to become a staple and it will not be one of the ones that I declutter um, I am going to do a declutter series soon, but I've got a lot of new palettes, or new to me anyway, that I want to play with and film with before I do a declutter, because I don't want to have to say, I haven't tried this yet, so I don't know. I haven't tried this yet, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's that one's that one's going nowhere. You can peel that out of my cold dead hands. Right, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check. You are still subscribed. YouTube do keep unsubscribing you, but they leave my films in your feed. So it's not obvious you've had the chop. They like my hair last night. Cut four inches off. Um, it's also worth double checking. Um, your notification status, not just for me, but for all the channels that you follow. Mine had got knocked back to personalised. Uh, I mean, YouTube don't seem to be sending emails at the moment anyway, but should they start resending them again? If yours have been knocked back to personalised as well, you're not going to get any emails. So just double check you've still got them set to all, just in case YouTube decide to actually do what we want and send us emails again. Um, once you've done that, it'd be awesome if you could drop me a comment and maybe hit that like button, it all helps with the algorithm. Um, you know, what do you think? Do you like this look? Would you wear this look? Is it a bit too much for you? Um, do you want to see me do a different look with this palette? Let me know. Um, yeah. I, I really enjoyed this. This was fun. Have you got this palette? Do you like it? Do you not like it? If you don't like it, why not? All these questions which only you can answer. I am losing the plot and clearly need to go and get a coffee. Right. 
Uh, if you are new here, however, and you've tripped over me somehow, hi, hello, welcome, hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, this is a pretty good example of what you're going to get really on this channel. Uh, me blethering on at you about everything and nothing at all in what I'm told is a soothing voice. Uh, usually whilst applying coloured pigments to my face. If that sounds like the kind of thing that you're interested in, it'd be awesome if you two would like to join the Fora family. Super easy to do. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that one day YouTube will start sending them again. In the meantime, to go with my rather ample back side, I have an also rather ample back catalogue of films you can watch. I've got all kinds of things from product reviews and tutorials like this, um, collabs, challenges, tags, um, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them, so there's going to be something that'll interest you. So, if you need a little bit of me time, as I've said now, for what feels like forever, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, and get comfy, sweetie. Just indulge yourself for a bit. Custard cream and a cup of coffee? Oh, I think so. Right, my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.